When it comes to battery backup, there's one name that really got people excited, and that's Tesla. When Elon announced the Powerwall in 2015, people literally went ballistic. And in less than a year, they updated the Powerwall 1 to the Powerwall 2, which hasn't had much of a refresh since. Sure, there's a hybrid model, and there are some software updates that came out to allow for some extra surge power, but it's fundamentally unchanged for the better part of the last six years. I will admit no one else has been able to spark that same level of demand or interest in home backup as Tesla has with the Powerwall, but poor customer service and long installation wait times has led many homeowners to search elsewhere. I've installed a lot of different battery backup systems over the last five years with each year demand increasing for more storage and more backup capabilities. I've done videos on many of these battery systems and continue to do videos on them. From the Zone In to SMA America Sunny Boy Storage to Solar Edge's Store Edge and Energy Hub to Enphase IQ Batteries and even QCell's Q Home ESS. One thing has been clear, the competition is fierce and one of these companies is bound to catch up to Tesla and surpass their simple Powerwall design. Heck, we might just find out in this video that it's Enphase or Franklin WH or neither, but we're going to find out either way by comparing these two AC coupled systems. Of course, if you're someone that lives in our area of Southern California and you're interested in going solar or adding battery backup to your existing system, then please visit us online to receive your hassle-free quote. We make the process of going solar quick and easy because we handle everything in-house, from plan design to installation. And guess what? If you call us, someone will be there to pick up the phone. So use that link down in the description below to request your quote today. With that out of the way, let's get into talking about the Franklin WH and how it stacks up against Enphase IQ batteries and the Tesla Powerwall. I really want to focus on a few key points that I feel our customers seem to be most interested in, like chemistry of the battery, the space needed for the equipment, the storage capacity of the system, its backup capabilities, the scalability for the future, the warranties, and of course the price. For those of you unfamiliar with Franklin Whole Home, they're a relatively new company that started in 2019. They're headquartered in San Francisco and received venture capital funding from Sequoia Capital. The Franklin was developed in-house from, from the ground up by expert engineers with various backgrounds in electrical system design to secure power supplies. While they don't say this on their website, it's clear to me this company had one goal in mind to develop a safe, simplistic, and reliable home battery backup solution to compete with the likes of the Tesla Powerwall. There's just two main components to the Franklin, the battery, called an A-Power, and the automatic transfer switch, called the A-Gate. When you compare this to, say, an Enphase system and a Tesla Powerwall, well, Enphase has two battery variations, the IQ3 and the IQ10. They have the ATS, which is their IQ system controller, and you have the IQ combiner box for the microinverters and the monitoring. Tesla technically has two batteries, uh, the Powerwall Plus, which is a hybrid, and the Powerwall 2, which is a standalone AC coupled. And their transfer switch is just called the Gateway. For this video, we're really only gonna be comparing the Powerwall 2 with Enphase and Franklin. When you compare the battery chemistry among these manufacturers, you find Tesla being the odd duck still using NMC, nickel, magnesium, cobalt, compared to Enphase and Franklin who are both using LFP, lithium iron phosphate. This is important to note because with recent changes to the electrical code, batteries that do not have UL9548 testing will have to be installed three feet apart. Both Enphase and Franklin thankfully, have the UL9540A testing certification, which means you can actually install Enphase IQ batteries six inches apart and Franklin A-Power batteries 12 inches apart. So much more compact design. It's important to note that these things, because wall space is limited for many homes and a multi-Tesla Powerwall system is going to take up more wall space than the Franklin A-Power or Enphase IQ battery system 
under the new electrical codes, at least here in California. We won't be able to stack them in front of each other anymore. I'm going to be doing a video on the changes in the electrical code in the coming week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel by using that link down in the description below. I'm not a huge fan of many of these changes, and I really believe they're going to affect the adoption of home storage moving forward, in our state at least. Maybe if we bring some attention to this and apply some actual common sense with what little brains Big Brother thinks we have, maybe we can get some of these codes adjusted, just maybe. But anyways, moving on to the storage capacity of these systems and their backup capabilities, each Franklin A Power offers 13.6 kilowatt hours of storage at five kilowatts of continuous power output and a surge of 10 kilowatts. We can connect up to 15 units together for a massive 204 kilowatt hours of storage at 75 kilowatts of continuous power output and 10 second surge of 150 kilowatts. Comparing this to an Enphase IQ10 battery system, which offers 10.1 kilowatt hours of usable energy at 3.84 kilowatts of continuous power output and a surge of 5.7 kilowatts. We can connect up to four units together for 40.32 kilowatt hours of usable energy at 15.36 kilowatts of continuous power output and a 10 second surge of 23 kilowatts. This isn't quite as exciting as the Franklin A power, but Enphase does have a few tricks up its sleeve when their batteries are paired with the eighth generation microinverters. You can actually combine the solar power output with the batteries capability and you can give yourself an extra boost in continuous power output during the day depends on you know the weather but you could be looking at anywhere from one kilowatt to 16 kilowatts depending on your end phase microinverter and the size of your solar system now moving on to the tesla powerwall which offers 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable energy and five kilowatts of continuous power output and a surge of seven kilowatts we can connect up to 10 units together for 135 kilowatt hours of usable energy at 50 kilowatts of continuous power output and a 10 second surge of 70 kilowatts. It's pretty obvious that the Tesla Powerwall for being relatively unchanged for the better part of five years is still a very competitive battery. But Franklin has done a good job at literally taking something like the Powerwall and made it even better with their A power. End phase, they sadly fall short in some areas here and it's really due to their affixation on using microinverters and small modular battery design. But you gotta remember, N-phase microinverters, the eighth generation paired with their batteries, well, you do get some extra features that you're not gonna get with the Powerwall and the Franklin. This leads us to the automatic transfer switch, though, for all three of these manufacturers, as this is what actually dictates how much solar or even generator power you can connect to the battery system because we all love a trifecta of power, solar, battery, and generator. Keep in mind there are some design variables, but for the most part, all three companies allow for up to 80 amps of solar, which comes in to be roughly 15.36 kilowatts AC. This could be around 20 kilowatts DC. Where Franklin tends to stand out with their A-gate is their add-on kits, a 200 amp standby generator connection. Test for their generator connection is 100 amps. And when you look at Enphase, it allows for up to 80 amps of generator input. There's two more things left to compare, and these things are probably the biggest factor on whether or not you get a battery backup system for your home and that's the warranties and price. Now sure, there are plenty of other things to compare and consider like software, user interface, ser service network, you know, how, how good is their service network, EV integration and so on. But these are all honestly things I feel we could, on we could discuss after you get your hassle-free quote from us. Starting with the Franklin Whole Home A Power, which features a standard 12 year warranty with a minimum 70% battery retention. They also have an aggregated throughput warranty of 43 megawatt hours, which comes out to be roughly 3,161 cycles if you cycle the battery every day from 100% to zero. Tesla offers a standard 10 year warranty with the same minimum. 70% battery retention, and an aggregated throughput of 37.8 megawatt hours, which comes out to be roughly 2,800 cycles. Again, if you cycled the battery from 100% to zero. And last, 
but not least, Enphase IQ batteries feature a standard 10-year warranty with a minimum of 70% battery retention. I think we're seeing a pattern here, but they have an extended five-year warranty for a total of 15 years with a minimum of 60% battery retention. This extended warranty costs you roughly $1,000 per IQ10 battery. You have to buy it directly from Enphase. The standard 10-year warranty from Enphase that they offer features a 4,000 cycle warranty or 2.8 megawatt hours aggregated through per kilowatt hour, whichever comes first. While the extended warranty offers 6,000 cycles at 3.9 megawatt hours aggregated through per, per kilowatt hour. Franklin offers a better warranty. Sure, you can try to make up reasons to why Tesla's is better or Enphase is better, but Enphase and Tesla do not offer the best warranty on paper. Yeah, on paper. If Enphase didn't include a throughput clause in their warranty and just did a time frame and a cycle, they'd beat both Tesla and Franklin, but they have a throughput clause. So when you take that into account, it makes it a little bit harder for them to just automatically have the better warranty. But enough on warranty talk. Let's talk price because that's what you've been waiting for. How much does one of these systems cost if you're getting it with a brand new solar system? And if you're retrofitting it to your existing solar system, pricing provided is a cash price. So there's no finance included. Pricing shown is an estimate and is subject to change without notice. I'm including pricing because it helps give a gauge. You might get a quote cheaper, you might get a quote higher. Everyone's situation is different. Everyone's house is different. And this is a YouTube channel. You could be watching this living in Germany or you could be on the other, you could be in Texas. I don't know where you're living watching this video. So I'm just putting costs based upon our area. Now starting off with pricing for solar and battery backup systems, I'm going to be using 25 REC Alpha Pure 400 watt modules. This comes out to be roughly a 10 kilowatt DC system. I'm going to try and keep the batteries close to the same storage capacity and it's gonna come out to be around 13.5 kilowatt hours. Starting with Enphase, coming in at $54,158 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $37,911 after. Moving on to the Franklin WH, coming in at $53,543 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $37,480 after. And finally, comparing it with a Tesla Powerwall, coming in at $51,629 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $36,140 after. Remember, these are turnkey solar systems with battery backup included. That's permitting, plan design, all everything's included. Moving on to pricing as a retrofit. So no solar, just the batteries. This includes plan design, permitting, installation, inspections, the whole shebang. Starting with Enphase, offering 13.44 kilowatt hours of battery backup for $21,110 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $14,777 after. The Franklin WH offering 13.6 kilowatt hours of battery backup for $21,043 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $14,730 after. And finally, the Tesla Powerwall offering 13 and a half kilowatt hours of battery backup for $19,153 before the 30% federal investment tax credit and $13,407 after. Well, there you have it. Tesla is still the cheapest battery. It doesn't matter if you can think we buffed it or not, but it's still in this video, the cheapest battery, even though they've increased their prices over this year. I think they've increased the Powerwall price like three times this year. Now, in my opinion, I think Enphase is still the best solution. If you're getting a new solar system, because of the IQ8 microinverters. All the components talk to each other. It's an Enphase's ecosystem is really robust. And basically the microinverters are talking to the batteries, which are talking to the transfer switch. 
all these components talk to each other and, and they can all work together to power your home ongoing during a power outage. Enphase has a rock solid system in my opinion if it's a brand new system using those eighth generation microinverters. But if you're someone that already has a solar system, even an older Enphase system like M190s, M250s, MS280s, you might be better off with maybe the Franklin WH because you are getting more storage, more backup power, and a better warranty. And you won't have to wait six months to a year for the battery like a Tesla Powerwall. Well, that's it for this week's video. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel by using the link down in the description below. And if you're someone that's interested in going solar or getting battery backup, please visit us online to request your hassle-free quote. We'd love to have you as a customer.